services up in Eureka and it's, uh, it's just good to be worshiping God. As I start this lesson today, um, there will be a, quite a few scriptures and those scriptures will be on the screens for you to see. Um, but I'm going to start by confessing a little bit and sharing with you that the last few days Maybe the last few months have been very hard. Um, in my profession, I deal with the COVID virus. I am an adult care administrator. I have about 61 chronically mentally ill tenants that I care for and have housing for. And uh, it has been a challenge. Not only that, 
But uh, with the virus rampaging through our nation, and then we see the fractures in our society that are condemning racism, but also then promoting violence. And then we have this godless part of the United States that seem to be pushing agendas in the political realm that they're designed to capture our personal freedom, even to the point where, as was mentioned here today, singing in our congregation may be limited. There are things out there working for us and working against us. And I've struggled as I've watched the faithful that are standing up in the center of this godlessness. And those individuals are being shouted down. They're being persecuted. Their message is being shut off. I really, and I've had a hard time, and Kathy, my wife, is here today. She can, she can admit that I get sort of worked up about this. And uh, I struggle to find a reason. I struggle to find a solution. I feel real inadequate. And I don't know what the future holds sometimes for our, for our country. But what I need to confess this morning is that in my depression or despair, I forgot what I preached on about two or three weeks ago. I forgot to focus on the strength to listen for God's advice and to rest in his power. You see, I became Elijah. And Elijah got wrapped up in the sin of the world and the ravages of that sin, and he forgot to listen for God's voice. And when he did, it came to him as a whisper. And interesting, in the midst of this, Kath and I went out and rented a movie. Uh, we tried to find a movie that works for my 95-year-old mother-in-law who lives with us and that works for us as, as Christians. And uh, we found this movie called I Still Believe. I don't know how many have, have seen that movie. It's, a, it's just a really good, true movie about a, a Christian gospel singer who's uh, very popular with the kids. But in that movie, there's a scene where a young girl is on a first date with the singer. And he's not, he's not famous at this point. And he's definitely, and obviously, if you watch the movie, he's very interested in this young girl. But she takes him to a planetarium on their first date. And then, at a time, the lights turn out. And the ceiling erupts. And the ceiling opens up to a duplication of the universe of God. And she sits there, and as they're sitting back like an IMAX theater looking at this sky, she points out the Milky Way with 300 million stars. And then she points to the Andromeda galaxy, which over, trillion, over a trillion stars are open and, and visible with our eyes. I've got a picture here. This is a true black light picture of the universe. This is not an artist's rendering. This is a picture from one of our big satellites. Then she likens the majesty of God to a human artist. While the artist paints, his masterpiece is limited to the canvas and his paintbrush. And what she says she simply says this, the God of the universe paints with galaxies beyond the definition of infinite proportion. Then she simply acknowledges a fact. And this is her statement of faith to a young man that's interested in a relationship with her. She said, the same God who created this beautiful handiwork created me. God knows me, and he gives me purpose. God knows my name. You 
You see, she had it right. In the midst of the chaos that we're living in today, we have God's testimony that we individually, you and I, have meaning and we have purpose. Revelations 4, 11 says it perfectly. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Not only is our purpose clear in this scripture, but I want to look at what Isaiah says in, in Isaiah 43, because it's very, very personal. So on the next screen. But now, O Jacob, listen to the God who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. That song, you could test it, that song was perfect. That song was perfect. When you walk, when you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fires of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I don't know how perfectly the scripture could say that you are special and you individually are uniquely identified and named by the God our Father. You were created for the pleasure of God, uniquely formed. Each of you is a gift in God's creation. He knows your name, and you are his. You can rely on him to take care of you in the deep waters, through times of difficulty, during today's time of oppression. Trust him, for he is God, the Holy One of Israel, and your Savior. My question to you today is do you believe it? And my call to you today is if you don't believe it. Today I am calling you to live consciously. So the next screen. Live consciously. Now, I love this picture. Because if you look at this picture, it feels like, or it looks like, out of our mind, we're touching the universe. We are part of the universe that God has created. Definition of consciously. In a deliberate and intentional way in a way that is directly perceptible to and under the control of the person. When I say live consciously, what I'm asking is to realize your purpose on this earth. Your purpose is to please, honor, and glorify God, the all-knowing, all-present, and all-power for God in this universe. But you can substitute the word God for Father. He is our Father. Take the
the anxiety of this present day and give it to him. Surrender it. Take hold of your purpose. Shine like the star you are. The personal, individual, unique, and valuable star existing on the canvas of the almighty God of the universe. My encouragement today is to shine bright. Shine bright. Involved in this understanding of our purpose on this earth is another requirement. And that is we need to recognize God's gift. Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 35 through 88, 38 on the next slide. And we've read this before. I actually had this scripture in my last sermon here. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or even threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No. Despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours in Christ Jesus, through Christ who loved us. And then the next one, which you just, you just have to memorize this. I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life. This person that just passed that we talked to, Bertha. Yeah. Nothing has separated her from God. In fact, she's probably a lot happier than we are with these masks. On. <laughs> Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. Our script ones and neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Again, I ask, do you believe it? If so, live like you believe. Live consciously. When I say consciously, live with intent, with purpose, with comfort and peace and knowing that you have been named by the God our Father. Our world's view of God can be summed up in Romans 1, 20 through 22. One more slide. There we go. Nope. Nope. Too far. Sorry. All right, listen to it. Romans 1, 20 through 22. For since the creation of the world... God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made so that the people are without excuse. For although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave thanks to him. But their thinking became foolish, futile. Their foolish hearts were darkened. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools. It's not our job to stand up and call somebody a fool. But it's very clear that those that aren't living in the purpose of God are without excuse. 
The world lives their life without focus, without purpose. They treat God rudely as they interrupt the purpose of God's gift with the daily grind of life. And this is what strikes me. They lose focus on reality. The reality of this life is that we are uniquely formed for the glory, honor, and power of God in our life. There is no question why we're here. Oh, a pet peeve of mine. Like inviting someone to dinner. You're sitting down, you're having dinner, and they get a call on their cell phone. They proceed to answer the call or return the text. Could have been right in the middle of one of my best stories. <laughs> now, what message is being delivered? I'm not very important, am I? How rude. You know what even happens when I'm buying the dinner? <laughs> when we live our lives out of focus, we become so involved in the acts of daily living that we lose, we lose the opportunity to tune ourselves to the unique purpose that God has planned for us. Like playing a guitar out of tune. We're out of tune. And we make a dissonant noise in the universe. And we mistake what we think is good for destruction. We become people that distance themselves from God. It's not God that leaves. We distance ourselves from God and we miss out on his blessings. When the things of this life become more important than our Christian walk, God knows it. Because he's the one that's sitting there like this while you're on the telephone. Make God your priority. Consciously acknowledge him and make him important and part of your daily walk. When you got up in the morning, it's not what color of pants I'm going to wear. It's how God wants me to serve him today. That's intent. That's conscious living. And when you do that, you start listening to God's whispers. You start seeing things in this world that God specifically has you designed to take care of. And even if that's the simplest thing, such as providing food for the homeless or the people that need it, you have no idea of who you're going to touch. But if you're living in God's purpose and in his will, guess what? He will bring that opportunity. Let's go to Jeremiah 29, 11 through 13, slide number 7. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. What better message can we give to the people of this world today than hope and future? Then you will call upon me. You will come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. When you seek God intentionally with all your heart. Slide number eight. He wants us to ask. He wants us to ask. When God is the center of our life, our living, our being, 
We will be asking for His will to be done in our life. Not a selfish prayer. Not only in our lives, but those in our centers of influence, in our neighborhood, at our work, in our home. The Christ-centered, God-focused prayer of a righteous man or a righteous woman avails much. Slide number nine. He wants us to seek. What happens when you're seeking? It shows that you're interested. It shows that you desire what you're looking for. We don't go looking for something we don't want. We are focused, we're intent, and we want fulfillment. First day I met Kathy. I met her in a lot of situations. It's the first day that you saw your spouse. I can't tell you. It just bubbles my heart over in a sweatshirt at 6 o'clock in the morning with her hair up in a ball cap. <laughs> but as she walked, what I realized is she had just brought some sandwiches to some of one of my sons and her son, but a bunch of guys that were volunteering at school at 6 o'clock in the morning. And I fell in love with her. The seeking process then as I pursued my wife, right? As I, there's some interesting stories. There. Stop <laughs> the seeking process is a maturing process. It's a sifting process. Seeking can be frustrating. But God says, don't give up. The promise? And I could have brought tons of scriptures out here. Seek and you will find it. The seeking is a heart thing. It's purpose, it's single-minded, and it's all-encompassing. What's interesting is this powerful, almighty, all-present creator of the universe wants a relationship with you. He wants you seeking him. But do you know why? Because you're part of his masterpiece. You're one of those trillions of stars that he has blessed and created and designed. And honestly, guys, we're unique. I don't think there's another person like me running around. If there were, I'd be a little nervous. Because <laughs> I know what I'm all about. I, I pray for them daily. <laughs> Slide number two. God wants us to knock. <clears throat> you ever heard that scripture? Knock and the door shall open to you. You know? Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall open to you. Now, that scripture, a lot, with a lot of a lot of preachers, a lot of Christians take that as the door of faith, right? And for new Christians that are here or that are listening to this message, you've got to knock on that door, and you've got to be ready to go through. And when you do, there's the God and Jesus Christ, His Son, on His right hand, with their arms open, embracing you. But you know what? Us that are that have take that step of faith, that have opened that door, that are in the living room of God watching the Super Bowl. You know that intimate relationship that we have with God and the Father. We still need to be knocking. We still need to be knocking on doors. Colossians four three, four two through five. Continue the steadfast, continue steadfastly in prayer. 
being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, now Paul's talking about himself, but at the same time pray for us that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison. That I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Paul was asking that God could open the door. But I want to take that to us. That should be our daily prayer. God, open the door. So what doors are you knocking on? What are you purposely, intently, with focus, consciously knocking on? What are you seeking to do for the ministry of God? Closed doors represent challenges, opportunities, and choices. Some doors we want to open so bad, we bloody our knuckles banging on them. Those are the doors for my children, for my stepchildren, for my grandchildren. Those are the doors that I knock on so hard. God, please just open that door for them. Give them what they need. Trust God to know which doors will open. Doesn't mean you don't knock. But I want you to do this. Do this one thing. Be ready to walk through the doors he opens. Because those doors, whether you're a mechanic, whether you're a janitor, whether you're the president of the United States, are uniquely created and designed, and you are the person the Spirit of God is putting in that opportunity. And that is your responsibility. And that is your work. For the God Almighty. Again, pray that His will be done. Ephesians, slide 13. Ephesians 1, 4 through 8. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. In accordance with his pleasure and with his will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him we have redemption through his blood. Though we walk through the rivers, the floods, we all walk through the blood of Jesus Christ. We sang that this morning. We have the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the richness of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. I want to substitute a, a word for la lavished. That was hard for me to understand. Slathered. Slathered. You're going to slather God slathers us with his grace. When we bite into that sandwich, sometimes that mayonnaise just comes out when there's a fresh tomato with it. He slathers us with his grace. You are God's masterpiece. God's promises are simple. They're abundant. And they're focused on his will and purpose and desire for each of us. And this is the hard part. But they may not be as we perceive because we're not walking consciously. We're not focused on his will. We lose sight. When we walk in his will, accepting his grace, he provides 
wisdom and understanding. And we as the masterpiece of God and the Almighty are getting what he desires to give us. And that's, again, that scripture. That's the peace that passes all understanding. We need that today so much. We need to know that God's in control today. No matter. No matter. We need to trust Him. There's a something, I don't know, I like these synonyms. Trust. Trust. We need to trust God. Total surrender under God's control. Total. Today's message is simple. Live your life in a conscious way that serves our Almighty. Whatever gift He has provided to you through the Holy Spirit, live in it. Relish in it. Whatever opportunity comes your way, make it a priority. Whatever anxiety fills your heart, surrender it to God. Start your day in relationship with the Lord God Almighty. Rest in His wisdom and make Him your priority. Let's go, we're closing here. Let's go to Isaiah 55. The, the scripture says 11 to 13. It's actually 9 to 13. I want to break this into two pieces. I want to go 9 to 11, and then over 12 to 13. It's out of the New International Version. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth, making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seeds for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. We may question, we may question God, but when we're walking consciously and we're asking and seeking and honoring the doors of opportunity he's given us in his will. We will achieve the purpose that he's put us on this earth for. Verse 12. Listen to the promise of God. You will go out in joy. And led forth in peace. Some of us have grandchildren. When they're just so full of life and they're just bubbling over with that laughter and they're just enjoying life, that's God's promise to us. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you and all the trees in the field will clap their hands. How do trees in the field clap their hands? with the wind of God whispering through it and you're listening to the storms or you're listening to the leaves and you're just out there part of this creation. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper. Instead of the briars, the myrtle will, will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown. Not for yours. For the Lord's renown. For an everlasting sign that will endure forever. The message today is live consciously. Live 
with intent. You are God's message to the future generations. Your children, my children, are the destiny of tomorrow. Without God, this world would be in a bad way. But like Elijah, he wasn't alone. Over 7,000 didn't bend their knee to Jezebel, to the wicked witch. Today, I don't know, I'm just not going to go there. Okay? I'm going to say that God, and I'm going to live my life like God wants me to, and he's in control. Do not doubt that reality for a minute. Live consciously. Let's pray. Father, you are our God. You created us. You made us, and you are very much aware of our heart and the pressures of this life and the troubles that we sometimes feel just overwhelm us. But Lord God, thank you that you're in charge. And we praise your name this morning for creating us so special and giving us Jesus Christ. I think the hardest thing we have to do, Lord, is just say thank you and accept this gift. But as we do, we also need to do it on a bended knee. With our eyes raised to you, surrendering and trusting that you have us in your arms and that you have our best still ahead. Thank you for that hope. Thank you for being our God. In the precious name of Jesus, we say, Amen. Amen. Amen.
today and tomorrow. Amen. We have nothing to fear because he loves us so much. He cares for us, and uh, he only wants the best for us. Thank you for that reminder. It's easy to forget sometimes. And I, I believe that this message, thanks to recording now, will go out to many, many, many people who need to hear it. And that's a, that's a great thing. So anyway, remember the people we prayed for this morning. Continue to pray for them this week. And uh, have a wonderful week. And let's close with prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to get together to hear your, your message from Cecil and your music from Tessa this morning. Lord, it's so great to be able to worship in a free nation where we can worship you without fear of, of being uh, arrested or, or some other situation that's so prevalent in the rest of the world. We are so grateful for that. Now be with us this week as we go forth into our communities. Help us not to be timid about sharing your name, about sharing your gospel with other people and let them know that there is faith and there is hope and there is love and there is truth. And they just, they just need to know it through your son, Jesus. We pray all of this in his name. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Have a great week.